Today we're going to compare three chapters in the Bible and see how God tells us the same thing three times. We're going to compare the seven seals to Matthew chapter 24 to the Song of Moses, sung at Deuteronomy chapter 32, and re-sung at Revelation 15.3. So let's get started with seal number two. There we see a red horse given a great sword taking peace away from the earth. And in Matthew 24 and verse 7, Jesus said that nation would rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And the Song of Moses in verse 25 says, the sword shall destroy outside. And in seal number three, we have a black horse given a pair of scales, measuring a quart of wheat and three quarts of barley for a day's wage. And Jesus said in Matthew 24 and verse seven, and there will be famines. And the Song of Moses in verse 24 says, they shall be wasted with hunger. And in seal number four, we see a pale horse where death and Hades were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, famine, pestilence, and wild beast. And in the Song of Moses, we see that God refers to the sword, famine, pestilence, and wild beast as his arrows. And in verse 23, he says, he will spend his arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger, devoured by pestilence. He will also send against them the teeth of the beast with the poison serpents of the dust. Verse 25 says, the sword shall destroy outside. And in Matthew 24 and verse seven and eight, Jesus says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of birth pangs. When we combine these three witnesses, the Old Testament with the New, we see that God is gonna kill a fourth of the earth by means of his arrows of sword, famine, pestilence, wild beast, and earthquakes. And Jesus refers to this time period as not the end, but just the beginning of birth pangs. Now it's very interesting that in Revelation chapter 12, the woman goes from her birth pangs into labor. Verse two of chapter 12 says, she was pregnant and was crying out in her birth pangs and in the agony of giving birth. Verse five says, she gave birth to a male child who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Now let's backtrack to seal number one, where we have a white horse and its rider had a bow and a crown was given to him and he came out conquering and to conquer. Now it's pretty obvious that he's got a bow, but where are his arrows? And so as we've just seen in seal number four in the Song of Moses, God gives us a list of his arrows of hunger, pestilence, beasts, and sword. And so in Matthew 24, we also see seal one's missing arrows of war, famine, and pestilence. And at Ezekiel chapter five, God provides a second witness of Jesus's missing arrows. And continuing on with seal number five, we see the martyrs under the altar crying out to God, when are you gonna judge and avenge our blood? God tells them to rest until the number of their fellow servants and brothers should be complete who were about to be killed as they themselves had been. And in Matthew 24 and verse nine, Jesus says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations, including the United States, including the state of Israel, for my name's sake. And in the Song of Moses in verse 43, God says, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and render vengeance to his adversaries. He will provide atonement for his land and his people. And in seal number six, there we see the kings and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, hiding from the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb. And in Matthew 24, and verse 27 through 28, Jesus says, for as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. And speaking of the corpses and the vultures, there in Revelation 19 it says, And he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come, 
gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And in the Song of Moses in verse 42, God says, He will make his arrows drunk with blood. His sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives from the heads of the leaders of the enemy. Finally, in the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about a half hour. Then John saw seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And in Matthew 24, and verse 31, Jesus says, He will send out his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds. Paul further identifies the timing of the gathering of the elect at 1 Corinthians. And in verse 15, he says, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Now, it's very fitting that when we go to the last trumpet, or trumpet seven, Paul's words are confirmed. And there in Revelation chapter 11, in verse 15, it says, then the seventh angel blew his trumpet. Verse 17 says, you have taken your great power and begun to reign, and here we go. And the time for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, both small and great. And so this is the only time in the seven trumpets where God says, time to reward. So Paul's words identifying the last trumpet match perfectly with God's words found in the last trumpet or the seventh trumpet of Revelation. If you would like a free downloadable copy of this chart, you can find the link at the top of the description box below. May God bless you with his words, his spirit, and especially obedience.